Good afternoon. Um, Going to be a bit basic this time. Uh, the topic today, before I jump into anything else, is uh, when men hold space, women can relax. And then I put at the end of it, or not. So I'm explaining some things about what I mean and how both men and women can have more effective relationships, connection, intimacy, safety, etc., etc. Interested? Stay tuned. So before I jump into the broadcast, let me introduce myself and give you more of the framing so you know what we're about here. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out already. I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and, singles and couples, men and women, because I'm passionate about this stuff. Um, I'm also a, uh, I also help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which led to these talks almost three years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. There's a book in here, I already feel it. So today we're episode number 859. I've done a bunch of these talks, as you may have figured out. Um, I'll give you information about the replays at the back end of the broadcast. And the topic today is about how men and women can connect better and how they can be more functionally intimate. So uh, the title, as I said, is when men, when men hold space, women can relax or not. And I'm saying or not because it's so easy to say that's what you do, but to practice it and get somewhere is a whole other story. So let me explain some things. I'm using, let me, let me rephrase. I talk about men and women, but I'm really talking about masculine and feminine. Because in this context, it's really the masculine energy that is the space holder. And it's the feminine energy that can relax into a different place. And I'll explain what I mean so you understand it and hopefully you can use it. So generally speaking, again, just to give you the framing, masculine aligns to male, which, ali which, which aligns to, ma to man. Feminine aligns to female, which aligns to woman. Just to be clear. Because the thing is, it isn't always that way, just to give you the framing. There are actually very... Um, powerfully aligned naturally masculine women and also very powerfully aligned naturally feminine men and that isn't dependent upon sexuality sexual preference either there are feminine men who are straight there are masculine women who are straight and they're also gay you get the point everything is available to all, all flavors but so in this general framing I'm using here I'm aligning masculine to straight men and feminine to straight female straight woman just to give you the framing in this place so the masculine energy, the masculine presence, the masculine polarity is primarily expressed through well, two things, direction and focus and stillness and presence. And that's why I said when men become, when hold, hold the space, because when a man is in his masculine heart and he holds that space, it is unmovable. It is also totally, absolutely, fully trustable which for many women is the one thing they're seeking. There are so many women who have been through, I'll put it politely, traumatic relationships. So their ability to trust men is diminished or even removed. So when they find a man they can trust, and again, when a man is in his masculine and holds space authentically, fully, and owning it, she can trust that. Now, I said she can, not that she will. And this is where I'm going to give you some other caveats. So let me give you some things about the feminine energy, because again, that's the masculine energy. The feminine energy, in simple terms, is the, how to say it? It's the dance of flow and grace. That's the feminine energy. It's movement, it's energy, it's, it's infinite, by the way. So don't demean it, don't, finish, don't feel you should be diminished, ladies. You're not diminished, you're actually much bigger than that. But the feminine energy is movement and flow. And it is also something that cannot and should not be pinned down or trapped because there are many women out there being wounded by men who try to contain them or, cons or constrict them not a smart move because the feminine is a flow and a dance and grace of movement and energetics it's tempting to think that a man has to keep up with that and that's also a mistake by the way when a woman's in flow and grace the best a man can do is hold his space and be present to her because if she likes him if she likes him she will, it's almost like, um, this is an interesting analogy, so bear with me as I try, try to flesh it out, see if it works, because it might not work by the time I'm finished. If you imagine that the masculine energy is like a, um, a tree, a branch, a solid branch, and the feminine is like a bird looking for a perch, she will seek out the perch that is most stable so that she can relax. If a bird lands on a high twig on a tree that's blowing in the breeze, should be always like uncertain and be and jump off any moment. When a man's not in his masculine, it's like that. It's that uncertainty and and wishy what not well flip flopping energy. I use that term. 
So when a man is in his masculine solidly grounded and safe, she feels that safety and she feels that trust. Now, gentlemen, you can't fake this. One, because it isn't the same thing when you sort of try to be solid and, so, and, and fixed up, which is bullshit anyway, sorry. But any woman who is awake will be able to tell you're off base in an instant walk away. So if your goal is to attract an amazing woman or your goal is to pursue an attractive woman, <clears throat> excuse me, and you're not anchoring in your true masculine and she's waking up to who she really is, you're fighting a losing battle. Don't even bother going there. So the piece I want to add in back at the end, by the way, I meant about when I said or not around women. So as I said before, the woman's looking for something she can trust. And because women, I know so many of them, have been burnt too many times, that trust has to be so deep, so present, so infinitely patient so she can so that, so that it so that it earns her trust because so many women have been burnt in relationships and so many men have been burnt too just to be i'm not going to be like one side of the versus the other men have been burnt too for different reasons but in this context i'm using this framing women have been tempted to look at men based upon their physical presence and strength versus their energetic presence and strength very different by the way and this is something I want to throw out for the ladies to understand this because for many women, they're tied into the paradigm that's been taught by society that the bigger and stronger a guy is, the more, pro more appropriate partner he is. Maybe, maybe not. The reality for me, and I've learned this over the last 20, well, certainly the last 12 years, but the last 30 years in my work, is that presence is not something based on physical strength. Presence is based on a few things, which is inner trust in self a connection to the heart and I'll throw in there just for the bonus emotional maturity the reason why I'm saying this is because for a man who's got an open heart he can receive a woman and she can feel his heart which is one thing she needs to trust that's vital a lot of men don't show their hearts they hide it because they're scared of being hurt themselves see we're both scared but the other part about having this um emotional maturity is because one of the challenges for men in a relationship when they're being masculine holding their space is when a woman is venting her upset emotional expression which happens once in a while once in a while or whenever it does happen if he doesn't have emotional maturity it's going to be much harder for him to, to stand still and weather the storm of her emotional expression this is actually Alison, Alison Armstrong's work and she talks about how for a man it's like being that lighthouse in the storm the masculine man can hold space, doesn't matter how rough the waves are, because the waves of her emotional expression, 90% of the time, aren't about him anyway. And this is the thing I talked about yesterday, the day before. There's nothing to do. The temptation, because we are about solutions, getting things done, making things happen, and the direction is part of the masculine mindset, the culture, we also want to fix any problems. It's, uh, it's also one of the problems, I mean, this, this ties into things like um, back in the day before GPS, when a man was driving, the woman's in the car, and he get lost, and she would ask him, are you lost? He would say, no, I'm nowhere I'm going. Because a man doesn't want to give up hope that he can fix the problem. It's built in, it's in our DNA to do that. So for men, it's about problem solving. So when a woman's upset, when a woman's expressing her emotions, hi Dea, nice to see you. When a woman's expressing her emotional upset, what a man's natural instinct to do is try and fix her upset, to make her feel better, in quotes, but it's not gonna work but try and solve the problem first. So two minutes into her venting, he's like, I can fix this, I'll make sure you're okay and stop worrying about it and stop crying. That is the wrong approach. <laughs> As I said before, when a man in the masculine holds his masculine space, it's immovable. It also means you don't have to move. Meaning that when she's upset, you can be there for her. Yes, you can definitely interact with her, but your presence stays with her. There is no place to go there is nothing to fix. And if you try to fix it, you're actually gonna destroy her experience and you actually stop her from feeling the freedom. Um, yeah, I gotta use, all right. <laughs> so Alison Armstrong has an analogy for this. She calls it about emptying the basket, or emptying the bucket, bucket I think. And the thing is, is that when a man is holding space for a woman, it's imagining he's holding the bucket for her to throw up in, energetically speaking. Not physically, energetically speaking, although well, I've got a story about that one. Yeah, okay, we'll come back. may come back to that, we'll see. So anyway, so, <laughs> so he's holding the bucket, the man in his masculine is holding the bucket for his woman, the feminine, to vent, to release, to throw up in. That's the fixing he needs to do, nothing else. 
because if he's thinking he needs to fix the problem and solve it for her before she's finished venting it's like taking that bucket of puke and pouring it back in again now I know it's going to make you go ooh gross that's the idea because ladies and gents mark my words if you do try to do that both of you are going to suffer from it so guys don't do that hold the space let her vent until she's ready to hear feedback and when she's ready only not before ladies when you're venting if a man doesn't hold the space for you, he may not be the one for you. Secondly, if he tries to fix it, you're gonna basically like, you know, push his hands away, like say, "Don't, I'm, let me finish," and hold your and take your space up. It's worthwhile doing because you're gonna train each other. If this isn't already natural, instinctual within you, then it's important for you to realize that you can actually help each other and train each other to be better at being authentic in your own nature. And I'll tell you this: once you start deepening in this place, your ability to be um, chemically attracted to each other will magnify massively now okay i'm gonna tell my story because <laughs> this is one of those ones where you um where i realize i'm telling the story and go oh that's one of mine um long time ago i was in a relationship that lasted maybe well it, hey amanda nice to see you in my broadcast it, it lasted it didn't last very long <laughs> a few months but i know that i know what happened where it, where it shifted so I talked about the story about holding the bucket, letting her throw up. That was the energetic principle of the emotional venting I was talking about from Addison Armstrong. So I was in, I was dating this woman. We had a great time, great sex. It was a very passionate relationship. I'll, I'll have to say that for about it too. It's probably, it's got to be 15, 20 years ago now. 15 years at least. Anyway, so one night, um, she, I, think she had, I think she had food poisoning. Anyway, she was basically feeling so upset her stomach. She went to the bathroom and threw up in the sink. And I went, uh, I went to her and held her hair back so she could do it. Just being of service. I wasn't trying to fix anything. I was holding her hair back. Because it was always in her face. And it's like, you know, she was so busy holding the sink. She didn't have a hand free to keep her hair back from like throwing up. And it was basically like, let me do something at least help you vent more clearly. You know, that sort of thing. Sounds gross, I know. But I apologize for that. We broke up very shortly after that. She broke up with me, not me with her, just to be clear. I was all in at this point. I mean, frankly, after the great sex and the fact I could see a throw and it didn't scare me, I was all in. <laughs> I know better now, but still, that was the thing at the time. It was great at the time. Anyway, I found out afterwards from, from conversations actually with her, we talked to her later on, and what I figured out actually first, then I confirmed it later on, is that that moment of holding her hair back when she was throwing up was the most vulnerable, intimate experience of her life, and it scared her shitless. She wasn't comfortable to trust me that much she wasn't trust sure excuse me she wasn't comfortable to trust any man that much and i crossed a line in terms of being safe with her that she wasn't able to comfortably adjust to so she bailed it was a powerful lesson for me but also a clarification a reminder that when i say you know man holds space she can relax or not we're all on our journeys now in my work with my clients a lot of what i do is hold that space in the masculine because for many women they haven't experienced that from a man now, of course, we're doing it over the phone, rarely in person, because we're not usually in the same town. But I understand that part of that is to hold the space as well as facilitate the process. So I'm working with my clients a lot of times when the upset comes up. As a facilitator and also as a masculine man, I have, I have the quandary about where do I step in, just to be transparent. And usually it wins out that I wait till she's done. And all I do is encourage to allow her to free up more and more energy. This is the depth of the work that is required sometimes to heal those wounds from past baggage, past relationships. We are continually growing and evolving as human beings, men and women and every other polarity as well. This is a cornerstone of that. When a man is in his masculine, just to summarize what I said at the beginning, that he can own the space he lives in, to stay grounded and present, independent of physical appearance. That's again, this is the whole point. A masculine man is not about physical strength. It's about emotional strength. It's about grounded presence. It's about owning who he is in his presence. He could be a midget, he could be seven feet tall, it doesn't make a difference. It's about who he is in his beingness. That presence is trustable and women who are in their feminine can feel it in a moment. And when a woman is not in a feminine, it's gonna be really hard to trust that energy. So again, man is masculine, holds a space. A woman in a feminine feels it, trusts it because she knows she can trust it. And then everybody wins. But again, it requires both men to own his masculine, women to own the feminine. And again, as I said at the beginning, this is a generalization. Because again, there are women who are masculine, men who are feminine. But I'm putting this in just aligning that way. So I hope this is making sense. I'm keeping this one short because I've been doing some longer broadcasts. I'm going to get back to being distilled down to a te teaching truth. 
If this makes sense to you, great. If you're getting stuck in this area and you want some help, I'll leave a link in the comments. You can reach out to me. Ladies, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk. My gift to you. We set up a time for a 30 minute conversation. We can go from there. That'll be in the comments. Um, I mentioned my books. That's going to be in the comments too. And if you're a guy who's trying to figure this out, I'll put a contact form in the sheet in the contact contact form in the comments too, so you can reach out for some help. Because I don't have a form for men to work with me, but if you're looking for help and I can help you and you want to help get some help, reach out to me that way. So again, there'll be a chat form in the in the comments for the ladies, a contact form for the men, and my book will be in the comments too. Um, and that's going to be a bit. I think it's going to be all the links I put in there. And I'll, I'll explain them in the comments too. So if you want the verbal description, it's barrysilver.com forward slash chat. For the ladies, barrysilver.com forward slash contact. For the men, barrysilver.com forward slash book for the book. Hi, Amanda, what was you saying there? So you couldn't agree more. Nothing sexier when a man can be a backboard when trying to bounce ideas off of or when we have a freak out and breakdown they're able to just be. Thank you. Well, just, and as I said in the talk, if you heard from the, I know you jumped in a little bit later, if you heard from the beginning of the talk, this I learned from David Data and Alison Armstrong particularly. And it's stuff that I've proven to myself more and more every time I use it. So I'm, I'm giving props to the teachers that taught me. So my wisdom comes from them and I'm owning it because I've lived it. So thank you for the feedback. I appreciate that, Amanda. Um, so give you the links verbally. The, the replays you can find, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, where have you been? <laughs> I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page. Um, this weekend will change because I'm at an event this weekend, but I'll figure something out and I'll notify you. I'll post on my wall where I'm gonna be, when I'm gonna be doing broadcasts. Um, so every day at 5 p.m. If you haven't seen it already, that's on facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page, which is Barry Selby to author, although not all of them are there, only the last like three or 400 of them. Oh dear, only three or 400. But I've got 850 something of them. So I do have a YouTube channel where I've saved them. Oh, my business page, by the way, you can like if you wish, Barry Selby to author. My YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby, all my social media is based on some form of Barry Selby. Um, now I'll get Instagram back again. Uh, Instagram, by the way, is the real Barry Selby because someone st my name got uh, blocked out from that. So, say la vie. So, you can find my uh, YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, YouTube, youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. So, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. And on there's a playlist called Messages for the Masculine. You can watch my broadcasts, um, all of them from, from number one all the way to this one. So, if you have questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below. If you want to get some extra help, reach out. Don't waste time. I can help you. Um, I have room for some clients, so this is a good time to sign up. And uh, practice this in your life. If you're a masculine man or a masculine woman, work on your being present. Work on your being owning your space. Work on your emotional depth and availability. If you're a feminine woman or a feminine man, owning your stuff to trust, owning your space to know who you are, to flow and be in the grace and dance of life, and to know when you find a man that's in his masculine or a partner is in their masculine, you can trust it. That's your homework. Sorry, I sprung that on you, I know. Having said all that, I thank you for watching as always. I appreciate you being with me. Um, if you want help, reach out, social media, or the comments, all the links I'll put in the comments. And uh, that's about it. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And I wish you a pleasant evening. And for those of you celebrating, um, happy Yom Kippur. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.